very thankful. Uh, I've been really blessed by God to have this opportunity. And so I always want to make sure that I, I thank him for that. I know this is not about me and it's about those three young men and the other 12 that are in there. And I mean, just, we just, we're just blessed to have terrific guys and an unbelievable staff. And um, this one was difficult for other reasons. Um, first of all, Mike has the best defensive field goal percentage team in the Big 12. And he's got, <laughs> I mean, I'm glad. Can you imagine what happened if Cissé was out there? It was like, what, 16 to zero second chance points? I mean, I don't know how many blocks they had, but it felt like they blocked everything. And so, and their pace of play is slow. So, um, you know, we didn't get to play free and up and down the floor. And so our guys had to adjust. Um, there's always the, the factor of being the team with the number in front of your name, that until you experience it, you don't understand it. Um, the, it's easier for an unranked team to prepare for a ranked team because as a coach, you have your kids full attention, right? They are locked in on the scouting report. They are motivated at practice. You don't have to do any kind of motivation at all, right? So now the number was in front of our name and the other team was having that kind of focus and that kind of preparation. Um, the second thing is that there's a certain pressure that goes along with having that number, like, man, we don't want to be ranked and then lose, right? And and or, or guys get a little tight. And then we have a big crowd like this for the first time. And the having to adjust to communicating with a big crowd and maybe you expend too much energy early or you're a little. So there's all those emotions because they're 20, 18 to 22, 23 year olds, right? And they have to adjust all that. So having not played well in the first half and only being down by two was, was huge. And then I thought we relaxed a little bit in the second half and was able to get some separation. But like all of Mike's teams, they made a run and then you know, we, we made some big plays. And so blessed, thankful. Coach, how excited were you to, you know, go Wabash Cannonball after this one with the, with the fans? Man, I, I was very, I, I, the, the introduction, tear the thing up, and the, right? Like, I've been waiting for that, right? Like, that's the thing I remember. And uh, our students, that section was just terrific. The fans all around were terrific. This is, when I thought of coming here and having the opportunity to coach here, that's what I envisioned. And I knew we had to do our part, right, to put a product on the floor that would get our fans excited about sacrificing a two-hour drive or whatever they had to do to be here on a weekday. And so I was thankful that we did that, and then they responded, you know, and so just very thankful for our fans. You got two games in a row where it's almost, you know, NBA type scores, and then this game's more of a defensive grind. You win all three. What what's it like to be able to win so many different t styles of games? Well, you have to be able to, and um, you know, uh, I mean, we came off those other two games, and people said we couldn't play defense, right? But I mean, those two teams we played are really good offensively, right? And and the pace of the game, the number of possessions dictated that the score was going to be high when you have good offensive teams and it doesn't mean that you're bad defensively you know and so in this pace and this style of play dictated that the score was going to be slower but it and we didn't score as much it doesn't mean that we're bad offensively right so it's just about you know in boxing they say styles make fights and this was just a different style and the last one for me is i feel like last game after the game you you challenged naquan tomlin to avoid fouls and today i feel like he responded and didn't pick up his first until about five minutes left in the game. How, what was that like and how important was that for you guys having a good defensive game? Uh, it was important for him to be out there. I, I, I don't mind him getting fouls as long as they're good fouls. So there were a couple of times I'm, I hadn't, I got to watch the tape, but there was a couple of times I thought he could have had some good fouls and put them at the free throw line and not give up layups. So we'll, we'll go check on that. But it's just, I mean, we got to keep getting better. Right, he has to keep getting better. Coach, what is going through your mind on the last play with Marquise de Chiante? Oh, that, is, that was crazy, right? Like, I, I, I'm not by nature a guy who cusses. It's not like really part of me. And I thought the ball was going out of bounds. And so in my head, I was thinking, oh crap, it's a turnover, right? But then he jumps up vertical and catches the thing and he's outside the lane, it looked like and then hammers it, and I said, what the? 
I did. I, I, and so I told the guys I did push-ups in the locker room for it. You know, but it was, I mean, you know, we say all the time, big-time players make big-time plays and big-time moments. And those two dudes connecting on that, I mean, that, that's, there's no coach into that. That's, that's players. That's dudes. Do you feel like Keontae kind of turned it up defensively uh, tonight? When it, maybe the offensive output wasn't where he would have liked it? Um, I got to go watch the film. I, I thought he struggled in the first half, so we sat him a little bit just to let him gain his bearings. And then the second half, you know, they're, they're good, man. They're, they're really tough. They got quick hands, and they get their hands a lot of balls. They test out. And, uh, but I thought when we needed a big bucket, both he and Keith did some great things to help us. Was this game kind of a study in patience for your offense to make that second, third, fourth pass? That was the plan, okay? I'm going to have to go look at the film and see how well we did with that. What we didn't want to do is take tough twos because they were so good at contesting shots. We really wanted to get more paint touch kickouts for jump shots. And um, I don't know that we were as efficient at that as we wanted to be. But I thought like our toughness on defense, and we turned them over a few times, came up with Cam Carter with that big defensive possession. I thought we did like really gritty things that are not pretty basketball plays that, that allowed us to win the game. And does the test presented by Caleb Boone kind of give you guys a good uh, understanding of the rugged play it takes inside in the Big 12? Caleb, Tyreek, Kona, I mean, it's, uh, you know, every team's going to be a little different. Not everybody has one of those, I mean, you know, or multiple of those. There might, they might be the longest, most athletic team. So every game is going to be something a little bit different. And uh, my, my hope is that we can play a style that makes them change their style rather than us having to adapt to them. And the block by Naquan Tomlin, I think it was 140 left, uh, and just how key of a play was that to the proceedings? Quan, he, he, um, he stopped pouting, you know, late in the, the, the second half and, um, and made some really good plays for us. So, Dave out, how valuable are Ish's minutes right now what he's given you guys to, you know, at the five? When, when anybody's down, like, Every guy who steps on the floor, minutes are very valuable. Ishes were valuable. Tykees were valuable. How about his charge, right, on the roll? It's huge, huge play, you know, and uh, his IQ to be able to be there and take it, you know. And um, so, yeah, every everybody's really valuable. Um, Ish hit a couple really big shots, you know, and uh, I, I think uh, I think I'm, we're going to be able to get Ish to um, not only make the shots but then also – maybe like because they run at him so much he can be a shot fake one dribble move the ball and get somebody else a good shot too and so that's going to be the next step for him is it fair to say that your team has really grown up in the last month it seems like if one of them has a bad play or mistake they come back a minute later with the key play i yeah i we're not letting one mistake lead to two and so uh i i see that more and more 15 and one. Tom had the great note that that's more wins than K State had all last season. Is there anything that surprised you about this run in hindsight? I I think the whole thing is kind of surprised. Like, you know, when you start, like we started um, in the summer. T well, when we got here in March and April, like we kind of looked at the team and said, "How many wins do you think we got with this team?" It just we didn't see enough wins because we want to go to the tournament, right? And uh, so then we started bringing guys in. As we started bringing guys in, we started saying, okay, how many wins do we see? And, um, and the young men that are here, we were showing them the non-conference schedule. Hey, can we go 10-1 and one in a non-conference? You know, and uh, I think Kevin Pagua told us if we saw 10 wins in our non-conference, then schedule another high major game. That's why we scheduled Cal. But if we didn't see 10 wins in a non-conference, then schedule um, a bye game so you can get yourself to 10 because if you can win eight in the Big 12, you go to the NCAA tournament. Okay, so that was a kind of our mindset as we're putting everything together. Never did we think we'd be 15-1 and one right now, right? That, that wasn't it. But 
our approach is not as such as that, hey, look at the whole season. We just, like, the next thing. Like, tomorrow, like, all we're thinking about tomorrow is them resting and recovering. And, you know, like, we try not to look too far down the road. So, looking back, the whole thing's surprising, right? But, I mean, I think, I mean, you saw tonight, you saw over the last few games, we, we got some dudes, right? And, and they're just making plays, man. Like, big-time plays. It's, it's, it's just... I shake my head quite a bit and smile and clap and say thank you, Jesus, you know. <laughs> Marquise obviously has a couple deep threes tonight. I know he had one at Baylor, too. As a coach, how do you balance the that's not a good shot selection, but it's going in, so keep shooting it mantra? <laughs> we have this agreement that, you know, like every day you're supposed to take your vitamin. Right, and you take one vitamin, you know, when those one vitamin gets so, so I, he gets one, I take one vitamin a game. And so, like, if it goes in, it's not a vitamin. If it's a bad one, then that, okay, I had my vitamin for today, bruh, we're going. And, but you know what, man? Um, I don't know if this is the setting to tell the story, but uh, I spent like the first part of the, the season and, and in preparing. Um, maybe focus too much on what our guys couldn't do, you know, or maybe somebody else has somebody that's better than, than us, you know. And um, I heard a sermon, and the, the pastor talked about, you know, that um, the king wasn't a good king, and uh, the Lord told the prophet to tell him to, you got the arrow in your quiver, shoot your arrow. That is your arrow. And... Um, God was really telling me that, look, this is, Keese is my arrow. I don't, I don't need to look at everybody else's arrow, what they're doing. I said, he's my arrow. And we had a meeting in my office, and I just told him. I apologized to him, and I said, bro, you are my arrow. We're going to win this battle with you. And I, it's, I, we prayed together, and I asked him to, uh, you know, one our thing was like, I want him to learn to see the game through my eyes, and I want to learn to see the game through his. And I, I feel like since that time, I haven't allowed – like little things that really don't matter to bother me. And I think he hasn't allowed like my coaching or sometimes when I say something to him to bother him, like we're just moving forward together. And so um, he loves K-State. He loves the game of basketball. He works so hard and, and I have to learn to like just take my hands off and let him be who he is. Can you just describe what your relationship with him has grown to? I mean, you've worked with so many guards in the past, but what makes your relationship with Marquise unique? You know, I don't know. It's unique. I, I think he opened his heart to us, and you know, we've opened our hearts to him. And and I've told y'all over and over what I mean. We don't have this team without him, right? Him and Ish, the the time they put in, and you know, and I, I just I remember when last year being at Baylor, watching him play, and particularly the Texas Tech game, right? And when Kevin McCullough tried to post him up. And he beat Kevin one way and then beat him the other and stripped him. And I just remember telling everybody, man, that's the toughest little joker in the 12. Like, he's a Baylor guard. When I was at Baylor, I said, he's a Baylor guard, right? And I think he's showing, given space and time and some other guys around him and, and confidence that, that he's, he's a high level, maybe the best guard in America right now, right? How much more can you see him growing at this point with the improvement that he's had just this season? Well, he's, he's going to continue to grow because defenses are going to throw different things at him. Like, they triangled in two. Like, Baylor triangled in two this, and, and they triangled, Oklahoma State triangled in two. So we're going to see different kind of defenses, and it's going to help his offensive basketball IQ improve. And so, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's, the, his ceiling is, he's, he's punching through paper ceilings. Like, some people are saying, oh, because he's 5'8", this is his ceiling, and he's just kicking that thing. Open. First of all, I just got to say the quarter zip game this season is so on point. That's another great one. Uh, <laughs> going back to the Wabash, you Wabashing with the students, would you like somebody to join you out there? Have you talked to the team about that? Well, no, I want the team to go around and shake everybody's hands. Uh, the quarter zips are courtesy of Austin Carpenter on our staff. He's in charge of the gear, so he gets all the credit for that. Y'all know I'm colorblind, so I don't put this stuff together. They tell me exactly what to wear. Um, as far as the Wabash, I actually I ran out there too quick. I needed to wait a little bit longer, right, because I started getting tired. 
And I was like, dang, I got here too soon. You know, so I need to wait till we get to a little closer to the da-da-da-da, because that's my breather. <laughs> Coach, kicking things up in the second half, was that just some adjustments you guys made, or was it just a matter of your team kind of settling down? No, we, we look, both. We settled down, and then we, like, extended the pressure with them so that they just couldn't run their stuff and move the ball and play at their pace. And, and so we, we're supposed to be doubling the posts. And uh, my man, Boone, I asked him in the hallway, I said, hey, how come you always have career highs against me? Like, he did it when I was at Baylor. He had these great games against us, you know, and, and there he is. And, and so we were supposed to be double teaming him. And sometimes we'd come, sometimes we wouldn't. So we got to go to the drawing board and, and fix that also. Coach, I, I got a question for you about uh, one of the plays in the first half. Uh, the officials went to the monitor to maybe look at a flagrant foul or if it was a common foul. They didn't end up calling anything. Did you get an explanation on that play? They didn't think it was um, intentional. They thought he was just trying to get up and move on. So, Thank you all very much. Go Cats.